I just did. Perfect. We are recording. Okay. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to this meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee on August 25th, 2002. I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. Uh, pursuant to the decision of the town of Amherst, which is permitted by the state, we're meeting remotely. Uh, I'm the committee chair pro tempore, given the uh, departure of Sarah Marshall, who stepped down at the end of June. Uh, I'm going to call on committee members uh, now so that we all know that we can hear you and you can be heard. So I'm gonna go in order and when I call your name, please uh, uh, by speaking up. Uh, <clears throat> David Williams. Um, Amherst Housing. Okay, we can hear you. Uh, Robin Fordham. Present. Jim Neal. Present. Andy McDougall. Present. Um, and I don't see uh, any other members here at the moment. Uh, and I'm Sam McLeod. So we do have a quorum. Uh, we have five members. We have a number of vacancies uh, at present three on our committee. Uh, and hopefully uh, before we start to deliberate on proposals, uh, those memberships will be filled. I heard from uh, town manager's office, they're in the process of um, setting up interviews. <clears throat> so this is our first meeting of the new cycle for the new year. And we have a number of different items on the agenda. Hopefully everyone has been able to, on the committee has been able to access them. They're on the town website under packets. If you are an attending, uh, community member, you can go to the town website under the CPA uh, committee and click on packets on the right hand side. Uh, I'm going, this is an, in addition to our regular order of business, we're going to provide an opportunity to have some uh, information provided to uh, prospective applicants if they have questions. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start the first topic on our agenda is to elect a chair and a vice chair for this coming cycle. Excuse me, Sam. Um, yes. Someone, someone going to take the minutes? Uh, we will have someone to take the minutes. Is there a volunteer? I, I will took... reluctantly do it. Uh, thank you, Andy. I appreciate that very much. Um, so Andy, you'll take the minutes and this is a recorded meeting. You'll be able to access uh, as before. Uh, everyone who's on the committee uh, in this meeting has been a member before, so that should work well. So uh, first order of business is to elect a chair and a vice chair for the coming year. Um, and I'd like to uh, first start with the election of a chair. Um, is there a nomination? I saw David Williams hand go up. David? Uh, yes. Um, I would um, like to nominate Sam McLeod as our chair. Second. Second from Robin. Uh, I see another hand up. Is your hand still up, Andy, or did you withdraw it? I was just going to second. Okay. Are there any other nominations for chair? I don't see any. Uh, so I guess there's not a need for discussion uh, unless someone wishes to raise their hand. Uh, I would call for a vote of the committee and I'll call on you and uh, please say uh, your vote. Uh, David Williams. Yes. Robin Fordham? Yes. Tim Neal? Aye. Andy McDougall? Aye. And I will vote aye as well. Uh, so that's uh, five votes in favor and no other votes. Uh, Vice Chair is uh, 
we'll need to have nominations. And I guess uh, I have been the sitting vice chair, I'm no longer. Uh, so it's an open position. And I guess the question is uh, who has interest and uh, if anyone has a desire to uh, nominate someone. I see a hand raised uh, by Andy. Andy. Yeah, uh, thanks, Sam. I don't know whether she has interest, but I would uh, I would nominate Robin. Um, I am already vice chair of the historical commission, so um, <laughs> I would, uh, and I'm and I'm in my last semester of my master's program, so I would decline that nomination for those reasons. But I appreciate the support. <laughs> okay, uh, so. I'll assume that nomination is withdrawn. I, I saw your hand go up, David. Was that correct? Yes, uh, I would nominate uh, Andrew McDowell as uh, vice chair. <laughs> so if, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the same road as Robin. As much as I hate to say it, I am. Um, I've, I've got a busy volunteer slate coming up as well with uh, planning. <laughs> um, okay. So I, I would I'd say also thank you, but would respectfully decline at this time. Okay, um, well. Sam, uh, I, I mean, with members not present, I mean, I certainly would nominate Katie if she were present today. So should, is this something we should delay for next meeting? Can we do that? Um, do members need to be present to be nominated? No. So, I mean, if she doesn't have availability, it might make sense yeah. to. Yeah. Um, the ability exists for us to delay it if uh, desired. I don't think there'd be uh, something occurring between now and then. Um, I don't know if that's a chair decision or a committee vote uh, once I opened it up. Um, is there a consensus among the committee in terms of how they'd like to proceed regarding that? Not among the committee, but if I was going to be nominated a vice chair or chair, I'd want to be there to be able to decide whether I want to or not. So, yeah. well, there as are well, six as well to perhaps nominate themselves. Uh, yeah, too. okay. Uh, there's also uh, other members. There's David and Tim who have not um, mm -hmm. present been nominated, who uh, would also be eligible. Um, to, uh, be there if you have interest. Um, yeah, I, I have an interest if that's okay. I have the time. I, I, I would be happy to nominate Tim. I think it'd be a good fit. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, I've heard uh, interest, a nomination, and a second. Um, so I guess that means we'll proceed with the um, vote, unless there's additional discussion. Okay, um, let me call on the membership and proceed accordingly. Uh, Andy? Aye. David? Aye. Robin? Aye. Uh, I'll vote aye. And uh, Tim? I will vote aye to make it unanimous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the vote is five to zero. Um, and I guess we're set with that uh, for now. Um, and thank the members for their nominations and for stepping up to uh, serve in the capacities as referenced. Uh, we have on the agenda two outstanding minutes, two sets of outstanding minutes to take care of. They're the minutes of December 9th from last year that were taken by Tim and the minutes of June 30th or June 2nd, or June 2nd of this last year taken by myself. Um, 
I don't know if everyone's had the opportunity to review them or not. I have, but let's start with the minutes from December 9th. Um, does anyone have, has everyone been able to read them first off? Um, Sam, know. I'm just, uh, I'll be abstaining since I was not a committee, so. Tim's read them. I saw Andy's hand go up. I've read them. Uh, Andy, go ahead. Muted. Motion to approve, uh, it was December 9th. I can't remember which date you said. Uh, December 9th, yes. I have a motion to approve the December 9th minutes. Um, prior to offering a second, I did find one item that would be worth editing, even though I assume it's a typo. Uh, I should have emailed it, but I didn't review them until later this afternoon. Uh, under the affordable housing development project, uh, it indicated the original request was for 50,000 and I assume it was supposed to be 500,000. There was a zero missing on the end of that, a minor edit, but a significant digit, so to speak. <laughs> on page number two, um, it says the original request was for 500,000, so I uh, request that we add a zero. Uh, I did not have any other edits besides that. Did anyone else find any? Okay. Uh, I'll second Andy's motion with that edit included. <clears throat> I see that Katie is here. Hello, Katie. Um, <clears throat> so I, I just want to, can I just clarify a process here of who's going to be editing the minutes and sending them to me so that I can post the final minutes on the website? What we've done in the past is uh, the edits, I believe, have been edited by the original taker. Is that correct at what we did last year, Sonia? I believe so, either that or the chair. I think Sarah took some on, so I don't well, I'll allow, I'm going to answer that. I'll allow Tim to make the edit to his minutes, if that's okay, Tim. Yeah, I uh, I can do that. It was just and I'll item. send that final copy to Sonia. That would work, right? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So can we uh, let's have a vote on the minutes of December 9th that Andy has uh, moved and I've seconded. Uh, I'll start the voting with. Uh, Yes, approval. Uh, Tim? Yes. Andy? Yes. Aye. David? Yes. Robin? Abstain. And Katie has joined us. Yes. And so that I believe is a six in favor and one abstention. Let's go to the minutes of June second. I, I think that was five one abstention, right? No. Uh, Andy, myself, David, Katie, and Tim is five and one abstention. Yes. Yeah. Uh, correction: five votes in favor, one abstention. Thank you, Sonia. The minutes of. June 2nd uh, were taken by me. Uh, I'm not sure who's had a chance to read them. Uh, does anyone have any suggested edits? Sam, I just had a couple of minor things that I can send to Were you the... I was. You can okay. yeah. go ahead and verbally tell me. That'd be fine. I, um, I'll just send them to you because I don't have them highlighted here. Okay. Uh, but nothing just... substantive it wouldn't okay. change anything the nature okay they were excellent mm -hmm. okay uh if that's the case um i suggest that we approve the minutes with the minor non-substantive edits i'll move accordingly is there a second second okay let's vote on the minutes um i'll vote yes tim yes Andy? Yes. Uh, Andy? Hi. Yes. And David, I assume you're yes there. Uh, yes. Robin? Abstain. And Katie? 
Yes, aye. So that would be five in favor and one abstention on the minutes of the second. And I'll wait for your email and send them to you, Sonia, probably tomorrow. Okay. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is just a general overview of the CPA uh, process. I added this to the agenda uh, on the chance that there were uh, some potential applicants who might have questions in the past few years that has occurred. Uh, there, and I wanted to point out to the community and potential applicants where information exists. Uh, do we have the ability, Sonia, to display the documents that we attached and specifically the application and approval process? It was a, uh, part of the uh, added items that I had sent? Uh, I don't have your packet. They were displayed on the town website. Okay, Sean is sharing. Sean? <clears throat> so what I'm displaying here is something that the uh, members of the committee are familiar with. Uh, this is a couple of pages that reside within the CPA plan. And the CPA plan is a document uh, that every CPA in the state has to generate, and it contains a wealth of information for any potential applicant. Uh, so this is the these are the specific pages that talk about how, as a committee, we interact with applicants, uh, and we can verbally talk about them here. But I want to call attention to pages 14 and 15 of that CPA plan. That CPA plan is available within uh, this evening's meeting packets that you can find on the town website under the CPA committee. Uh, but there's also a link that appears within the uh, main page, not in any specific packet that references the CPA plan. And uh, I highly advise for anyone who has interest in the Community Preservation Act Committee and just CPA in general, that they read that plan. It answers a great many questions that would come up, both in terms of what types of projects are eligible, uh, the origins and how we go about decision-making. Um, it will save applicants and really anyone involved a lot of uh, time and focus their thoughts. So there's the CPA plan that exists on the town website and in the packet. And then there, within that, there is this applicant uh, approval process. Uh, later today, uh, we will show you, uh, we will go over the specific current application. Uh, and I'll show you a sample one as well. But for now, the approval process is such. Can we go back, uh, Sean, to that prior page? Uh, this just explains what we do. Essentially, we receive, we put the, uh, we open up the application period, which is going scheduled to occur on September 1st. Uh, there's a form and a link that will be live at that time on the town website. Uh, and the applicants will go through and answer questions in terms of the project. We recommend, even though this is a shortened time frame before this current application, we recommend that anyone who has any interest in applying for CPA or submitting proposals that they communicate with the relevant boards, the town boards that are involved in them. There's the, and we have representatives on this committee, but you can also find contact information on the town website. The relevant committees are the Historical Commission, uh, the Conservation Commission, Housing Authority, and or the Municipal Affo Affordable Housing Trust, as well as the Recreation Committee, Commission, and Planning Board is a member. Um, it can be of great help to applicants to communicate in advance, in particular uh, related to issues of eligibility. 
uh, and in the historical commission uh, qualification and process to uh, go through their review process because we receive recommendations from the various committees on applications that fall within their purview. Uh, once the communication, once the application process has gone forward, our committee will then meet. Uh, we receive all of the applications. The town will review them, uh, a new step for any issues that they discover before they send them to our committee. Uh, but then the committee will receive the applications and we will read them and come up with questions for the uh, applicants. Uh, all the different members in our committee will uh, submit our questions, we'll consolidate them and send them in one time. We'll go over our calendar a bit later, uh, but the applicants will then uh, respond to these questions. Um, committee members will read them and we'll go <clears throat> to the next step, which would be a proposal time period where the applicants, after asking the questions, will be able to present to the committee in full relating to their project in a public meeting. There'll be comments that can come from the audience as well as questions from the board uh, committee members. Uh, there may be additional questions that come about from that. Thereafter, our committee will, uh, after hearing all of the different proposals, will deliberate uh, in terms of how we view uh, the individual projects. And uh, we had a process last year that we don't vote initially. The individual members will come up with their uh, general ratings based on a process that they use uh, uh, according to the eligibility requirements that exist within the CPA plan. Uh, and that's a document that if you can't find, just let us know, we'll send it to you. Uh, and then we uh, deliberate. One thing that occurs prior to that is that we receive the year's budget, uh, the amount of available funds that the uh, committee can, uh, that's eligible uh, from the town uh, financial staff, Sonia and Sean provide that to us. And then we go through an approval process. Uh, if there are further questions, we will provide the opportunity for the uh, applicants to clarify, uh, and then we will vote on recommendations for funding, uh, assuming the projects are approved, that report then goes to the uh, town council. The CPA committee does not grant the funds. We authorize, uh, we approve and recommend to the town council who has the official vote to release funds. Um, there is later on, once projects are approved, it's based on the fiscal year cycle, uh, they will start, this current year is fiscal year 2024, uh, that would occur, uh, start, the funds would become available next summer, uh, excuse me, the summer after next, and <clears throat> there's a reporting requirement as well, once approved, you'll be notified for an annual update to be provided to the committee. Uh, on page number 15 that, 15 that Sean is showing right here is the approximate time frame, time frame, but we can display the calendar later. That's a general uh, discussion. I didn't want to go into a big slideshow because we've approved the, as a committee this plan and this time frame, uh, but I wanted to call attention to it, uh, to the potential applicants and to the community as a whole uh, for any questions they might have. I realize I've been uh, speaking a bit here, I'd like to open it up to other committee members if they have something to add to what I've said uh, at present. Uh, I see a hand from Sean. Uh, uh, Sean, I'd like to call on you. Sam, do you want me to just share the calendar now since we went through the sort of the, is it helpful to share the calendar with the actual dates um, for some of those? Um, I, I think it would items. be helpful as a visual, although later on in the agenda we'll be voting on it. Uh, that would be uh, a good idea, Sean. Now, is this the calendar that's live on the website, Sean, currently? Or is this one that will be? Um, that's a good back? question. I don't know if it's on the website yet. Um, it might okay. be, I'll have to double check, um, but it'll go up. If it's not up there now, it is it's in the this meeting. Okay. But is it on the, is it, are the dates on the CPA webpage yet? It's in the packet on the webpage. Okay. 
So this is the uh, tentative calendar that the committee will be uh, reviewing and confirming later on in this meeting. But this, as Sean pointed out, gives an idea of the general steps in the process. Highlighted in red are the deadlines that we're looking at, which would be September 1st. The proposal application uh, becomes live uh, and it closes September 30th. So there's really a 30 day window to make sure that the proposals are submitted. Thereafter on Friday, October 14th, assuming we stay with that, uh, there's a project eligibility review deadline. The staff will look them over to uh, and distribute to the committee. The committee will then generate questions by Friday, October 28th to be distributed to the applicants and the applicants will have a short time period, a little less than a week to answer. And there's usually a lot of uh, questions from committee members. So any potential applicants should recognize that the week of October 28th through November 4th uh, might be a busy one. Uh, and then thereafter, we have presentations that will be scheduled uh, uh, by, I guess, Sonia, do you generate the schedules uh, based on how the applicants come in? That's yeah. my understanding. Uh, and that will be communicated to all the applicants. Uh, we'll hear the meetings and depending on the uh, number and the time frames allotted, uh, we have slated currently time through December, uh, <clears throat> December 22nd, uh, December 1st, excuse me. Uh, four presentations, three weeks. If we have to add more, I suppose we could, but this is the current slate. We then have an annual public meeting where our committee, uh, public, public hearing where our committee deliberates and potentially votes. Last year, what we did was deliberate thoroughly, discuss each proposal prior to voting, and then the subsequent meeting we voted. Uh, we've allocated Thursday, December 8th, as well as Thursday, December 15th for potential uh, deliberations. Thereafter, once the votes are final, we then write up a report and send it to the town council. Uh, so this calendar is another helpful resource to potential applicants. So uh, thank you, Sean. Any, uh, anything to add from any committee members? I don't see anything. I do see a question in the audience. I'd like to, uh, this is a public meeting. So I'd like to go to the next item on the agenda, which was to open it up. If there are questions or comments, excuse me, public comment from the audience. I see one hand is up at present. Uh, this is, thanks, I'll be in touch if I can't figure it out. Okay. <laughs> That's a good comment. Is there, there anyone? There was a question about getting the um, slides that were up. You know the. Yes, the, I answered that. Yeah, question. just to be just to be clear. Yeah, and that was the response was thank you. Right. Thank. Yeah, Sam, I had a quick question. Yep. Is that appropriate? Yeah, uh, certainly. Go ahead. Oh, um, I real first of all, thank you. This is I I was so appreciative of this schedule. I think it feels doable. And um, I appreciate that the staff is reviewing the eligibility too. And I just wondered um, if, and this probably is already in the plan, but just to confirm that those that don't meet eligibility, that we would just at least see what those projects were, um, that were, you know, the applications, um, even if we're not reviewing the applications, but just see what they were. It's just sort of a curiosity to see what other, what people are looking for. Um, and if that's possible. It certainly makes sense for us to uh, be aware of what's been presented. And I th think the committee needs to be informed of those. Uh, but in the past, we've had a couple of proposals recently uh, that we can all remember where we had a lot of discussion about eligibility and we wound up going back to, to town staff to provide guidance on uh, the, you know, whether they qualified, we had to interact with the town uh, legal counsel. Uh, but Sonia, uh, uh, I would assume we'd be able to see applications, uh, even if they just uh, what the what the request was for. I don't necessarily need I'm just I'm so appreciative of the staff doing that because it is a huge help um, to 
weed out those that aren't eligible, of course, but just knowing what people were asking for would be of interest to me. Yep. Thank okay. you. I'm sure they'll uh, all get they'll all get posted on the website. Good point and good. Uh, uh, thank you for bringing that up. Now we have the opportunity for comments from the audience. Um, I also see some questions here, uh, and I'll get to the questions in a bit. Uh, are there any public comments from anyone attending in the community? You can, I believe, raise your hands. I'm not seeing anyone. Um, now this is my first time uh, reviewing them. Sonia and Sean, do either of you see any hands raised in the audience? No. no. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and read questions that uh, have come in. I see one from uh, Stephen Maybe, which is, are multiple bids required for the application? We don't have a standard requirement at present. It is something that the committee is has discussed as a recommendation that might be of benefit, particularly to some types of projects that are uh, bidding with contractors, this came up. Uh, we have not, as of yet, uh, made this a requirement. Um, Robin, I see your hand up. I assume it's in relation to this question. Is that correct? Yeah, I just had a quick comment that um, I think it's uh, in terms of, I know in terms of historical preservation projects, it can be sometimes difficult to get three, three um, uh, separate bids, but that, um, that wondering if it's possible to just suggest uh, that people at least reach out to more than one uh, entity and, and re report on uh, um, the effort to get more than one estimate in the case where there's less than one. So I'll, these, just, I'll just add that it, um, bids are required. We have to follow procurement laws if the town is involved, if it's third party group, um, then bids aren't required by our procurement laws. So there's the answer. The committee is uh, considering adapting our letter to reference the uh, benefits and interest in having multiple bids, but um, we have not changed the process as of this moment. Uh, Another question that we have here is, are cost estimates accompanying the application required to use prevailing wage? Um, this came up last year, and I don't believe that we render an opinion on that. Is that correct, Sonia? The I think it's pretty much the same answer. If, it's a, if it turns into a town job, like the, uh, uh, like the pickleball courts, because the DPW will be doing it, we would have to follow all procurement laws, which would include prevailing wage. A third party, I don't believe they were required to do that. Yeah, so just to confirm what Sonia said, I, I put up a chart from the CPAC uh, website, and this is sort of a, a useful guide. So depending on who the property owner is and who's administering it, it, it lets you know whether procurement and prevailing wage laws apply. So just like what Sonia said, if it's a public building or if the town's involved in administering it, everything applies. If it's private entity and it's being administered privately, then they don't. And can this be, uh, where, where can someone find this who wishes to read in more detail what you've just displayed, Sean? Um, we can um, maybe, we can kind of retroactively, I guess, add some links to the packet. So the, I guess we should just say if people are interested in digging into the details, um, the CPA Coalition has a website that has lots of um, information on it, frequently asked questions, all the you know, it's usually where we go for clarification on issues. So we can put a, um, I can put a link to this in the chat um, and and then people can go and visit it. And that, that website to my understanding is www.communitypreservation.org. Uh, and that's a state run, uh, actually, I don't know if it's a state run, but it's it, not it state, is. but it's the state works very closely with them. 
they work closely with the state and their charter is to assist and uh, uh, expand CPA adoption and uh, operations throughout the state. It's extremely helpful. So I just want to underscore what Sean has said. And if you could <clears throat> add that to the packet or and or put the link in the chat, it might be helpful. Uh, Andy, I see uh, your hand is up. Yeah, I was just going to ask Sean, if you wouldn't mind at least maybe emailing me that just so I can get it in the minutes. Um, I don't know if the chat is persistent in the video. Yeah, we'll um, do it right now. Okay, thanks. And then I guess the other thing I was just going to say in the bids is that, you know, we get requests for more money than we have. So, you know, if you can get multiple bids, you'll be able to have options for, you know, a lower, hopefully to, to be able to get the work done at a lower cost, which, you know, should make the project more, you know, likely to be approved, right? If if we have, um, again, if we're, if we're horse racing projects against each other, um, you know, we're working with the money we have. So I would just continue to encourage people to to do whatever they can to drive, you know, the best bid that they can get before they come to us. And I understand it's not a requirement, but I think it is important to point out that, you know, we can only we can only use what we have. Uh, thank you, Andy. And I'd like to add to that that uh, getting multiple bids is to the benefit of everyone. Uh, it's not simply for the committee's uh, uh, finances, but there's information gained from four applicants and for project managers, uh, aside from the cost impl implications potentially. So thank you. There's another question here, which is, will you, from Ellen Kosmer, uh, will you consider proposals for funding if the project has already begun? Um, that's a question related to eligibility. I'm, I'm not sure that we're able to provide funds for projects, but it's something I'd like to review uh, with certainty. Robin, I see your hand is up. Well, uh, yeah, I was just going to comment that my understanding, and I'm sure the town can give us the full definition, is that we certainly can't fund any work that's already been completed. And it may be, maybe the question is, can we fund work that is for a project that started but not yet completed? Um, yeah, but, yeah, right, right. No, I, not yet completed, but if it's begun for anything that I think we'd not, the retroactive payments can't be made. Retroactive payments cannot be made. Uh, in terms of the slicing of that question, I'm not sure. Although one thing to recognize uh, is that the fiscal year uh, for uh, that we're discussing is not the current calendar year. Uh, this is sometime in the future. So the odds are that a project that has begun uh, would be delayed for the purpose of an application is. Uh, something that probably doesn't make a lot of sense. So uh, hopefully our responses have <laughs> provided some feedback on that. We certainly can't pay retroactive or for work that's already been done. Uh, I see Sean, uh, do you have a, a comment, Sean, related to this? It said, it says in the question, you'd like to answer the question live. Pardon? Sorry, I'm just um, saying that it, it was answered live, so I'm going to move it oh, to the okay. answered category. Yep. Um, so I guess those are the questions that we have heard from the audience. Uh, I give it one more opportunity for public comment from attendees. So I'm not seeing any or hearing any. Uh, so I'd like to reiterate again, because I think it's of great importance uh, for, for the town, for the committee and for the community that anyone who has interest in CPA and it's a fantastic program, uh, please take the time to read the CPA plan that exists on the town website in this packet uh, and look at the details within in terms of eligibility 
look at the uh, application process and the committee review process in that plan, uh, but also do in advance, uh, although the application for this cycle is going to be opening up shortly, hopefully September 1st with a 30 day cycle, uh, there's nothing preventing potential applicants from contacting and starting on their projects well in advance and communicating with the different town committees, uh, whether particularly of importance for uh, historic historical commission because there are issues related to being on the register uh, and how the historical commission views things, but also for other projects. So uh, we may or may not as a committee have a session and seek to provide information earlier in the cycle next year, but you can do, uh, you can assist your process and inform yourself greatly by looking at what we have. Um, any other comments from the committee on this subject? see your hand is up, Robin. Is that from before or currently? That's from before, sorry about that. Okay. So I guess we're uh, all set with this agenda item and I'd like to move on to the next item, which is review financials. Uh, Sonia, is this something that you're uh, prepared to talk about? Sean, can us? you bring that up? Okay, um, so we are hoping that this year's fund balance is gonna close out at the 2.3 million that's at the top here. It's not final yet, so this could change. The, both of these years, 23 is still an estimate and so is 24. So we're kind of dealing with two estimated revenue budgets at the same time, which can get kind of crazy. So um, for beginning for 23, we, um, we're shutting off 2.3 million. We're, assess, we're estimating our assessed local tax at a million and then our state match at 350,000. And that's 35% because that's what the state guideline was for this year that we should be getting sometime in November. That could go up which will add more money to the bottom line. But at this point, we haven't received it yet. Um, so what we had for 23 available is 3,666. And we appropriated the 2,346 for the fiscal year 23 process, which, and we had a budgeted reserve of 533,105. We had a lot of returned appropriations this year that totaled $358,000. So I'm estimating for fiscal year 23, and, and it's gonna change because more uh, returned appropriations might happen. We might end up with more state money. Um, a lot of things could change on that. So we're starting with a beginning balance of 1.146 for fiscal year 24. We're estimating uh, 1.1 million. I added an extra 100,000 on there because our, um, our surcharges are start to, to slowly grow. Um, and we're only estimating 25% at this point for state match because this is for 20, fiscal year 24, not the current fiscal year, which the state just gave us for 35. So we wanna stay conservative because we don't know where the economy is going at this point, which leaves us an available of 2.4 million, almost 2.5 million. From there, we're we'll take, uh, we have to pay our debt service, so that's a no. So what's left is 1.8 million for the fiscal year 24 budget cycle. Now, if we don't spend that 533 budgeted reserve for something between now and July, or when we decide we're gonna spend it, whether we wanna add it to this, uh, the bottom line here could grow by $500,000. But we have that budget of reserve. We put that there. The committee decided that if things come up during the year, the only way we would be able to convene and fund it is through a borrowing. And unless you, unless you actually put that money aside so that you can appropriate from it. Did I confuse everybody? 
Sonia, can I just also add that um, the debt service number in orange, that includes an estimate for the regional track project that was just recently approved and also the um, the Jones Library, right? Sonia, those right. are both, those estimates are in there. Right. That's taken from last year's debt schedule that was in the packets. Any uh, comments or questions from the uh, committee? I can't see the screen at, at this moment. One moment. I can't see if there are any hands up. Sam, yeah, my, I Andy? do. Actually, do you mind putting this the screen share back up just so I can track the number? I I'm embarrassed because every year I um, will like forget which number we're looking at. As we think about what our committee is trying to accomplish this year, are we looking at the the fiscal year 2023 or the fiscal year 2024? 24. Okay. So the 23 carries down the estimated budget. So you're looking at 1.8 million at this point in time with a potential for an extra 533 for in year depending on what we do with that and then remind me if we decide so if by the june 30th we don't find anything it just where does that money end up going it falls back to the fund balance but the problem with june 30th is we would have already gone through the whole process for 24. So if you decide there's projects really worthy of using that money for the fiscal year 24, the committee will have to decide to let to let that be part of it. Okay, so as we review the project this year, we'll see what the overall ask is and then determine if we want to hit that reserve, correct? Yes. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, no, I ask it every time. It's okay. It's confusing. Tim? Yes. Uh, Sonia, I, could you remind us what last year's total requests were? We form, we finalized the 2.3, which was voted by the town council. So I was just curious what last year's re total requests were. Do you remember? Uh, I don't, I didn't bring that home with me, so I don't have it, but I'll get it okay. to you. And I think it's in the report. Um, yeah. Is it, is it described in the report from last year, Sonia? It should be the recommendations. Okay. Oh yes. Oh, I understand all that. I just don't have it. I was just trying to understand uh, the relationship to the 1.8 that is available. Um, if we got similar kinds of projects, they might exceed it by, I don't know, X percent or something like that. So I was just curious. Okay. There's a question from the audience, Sonia and Sean, that says, just curious from Carol Lewis, there is no debt service before 20, fiscal year 24, none in fiscal year 23, question mark. I think they're asking if there is debt service in either of those years. It's all consolidated in that two point something million. So yes, yeah, so there was debt service in 23 as well. Right. It's just not broken out separately. The details in the various fundings and projects do uh, are available separate from this meeting. Everything's in the uh, in the uh, CPA report that's online. Okay. Um, I have a question for you, Sonia, related to the financials, and uh, we were talking about the. Budgeted reserve, uh, which at one point was 600,000, right now is 533,105. In your time on the committee, has what's the lowest you've seen the budgeted reserve go for? Zero. Go to zero. Okay. And was that a really, common? We haven't really, we haven't, we started doing it, but then the timing of, how, of when we do CPA now, so that it times right with um, the JCPC process it kind of cuts it short. We used to not do it until later in the year. So there was no money available to appropriate for CPA if projects came up. The only thing we could do is, is do a borrowing authorization. And the DR, DR um, says we have to budget a reserve if we want it to be available. Even though we're using estimated revenues, we still have to budget a, a reserve if we want it to be available for further appropriation once the tax rate is set. Uh, 
are uh, correct me if uh, tell me if I'm correct was the Kendrick Park uh, and or the track I thought I heard Sean said that were those both uh, uh, voted on using reserves or not Kendrick Park Kendrick Park I recall we had a, a allocation in December outside of our standard um, I'd have meetings. to go back and look okay uh, okay. Uh, any other questions on the financials from anyone? Just to clarify on those two, Sam, I think those were both debt authorizations. Um, the track one, for sure. Um, yeah, that's right. And Kendrick Park is so. The, so you're right; they were off cycle, but they weren't from the reserve because they were okay. debt. Um. <clears throat> so that was update on prior year balances and discuss any issues. Uh, no, excuse me, that was review financials. Uh, the next item on the agenda is review proposal letter, uh, dates and discuss any changes if needed. Are you able, Sean, to put the application on the website? So I had in the packet sent a sample application. It's redundant because I didn't realize this one was available as of yet, but this, what we're looking at here if I understand correctly, is the tentative application that will appear on September 1st. Is that right, uh, Sean? Yeah, yep, this is what would, uh, the form will become available and we'll put a link on the CPA uh, proposal project page. So any, you know, we can go sort of paragraph by paragraph and if there's any changes, we can make those edits. Um, I can make note of it now. Yeah. Um, there were in, the prior cycle, a couple of questions that came up or suggestions. One was the addition of a physical address or if applicable for projects. Uh, and the question related also associated with that is, did we wanna add a field to include uh, preferred timeframes and or contact information for any site visits? My own belief is that a physical address would be desirable. I'd like to open it up to the committee if they have any comments related to including address and or question related to site visits. I see a thumbs up from Andy. Is that related to both uh, the address and site visits? Yes. Okay. And I saw Tim's hand go up. Do you have any comments or is that just uh, also an agreement? Oh, no, no, no. That was a... I, I agree with the uh, suggestion. Okay. Uh, Katie, I see your hand up. Yeah, Sam, I, I agree with adding both of those. Um, just maybe with an asterisk around site visit, because that's um, maybe that's somewhere here, but I know it's not required. And so just to be clear, when you said about, you know, potential time frame that it's not a requirement right now is my understanding. And so just yeah. so people know, pardon me, Sonia? It's not a requirement. Right. And so, just, you know, I, I just don't want there to be a misunderstanding of, of that or it's just clarity's sake. Uh, do you have a suggested phraseology? Um, Well, maybe it's maybe it's a physical address, and then um, we could ask, you know, if there's. Uh, we could just put a question on here asking if the site visit is permissible. I mean, it might be somebody's private home, and they might not exactly. want to go around. Yeah, there, so it's Whether not it's required. And if so, what's the time frames? Uh, I don't know which hand came up first, Andy. I'm going to assume it was you. Yeah, uh, no, I'm just kind of, kind of wrestling with the thought here. Um, can we make it, like, could we make it a requirement and be within the CPAC parameters? Because while I understand and, and I'm sympathetic to not, people not perhaps wanting to welcome strangers into their homes, they are asking for, a, <laughs> they could be asking for a fair amount of money and I feel like for us to make an educated decision would be um, important to understand as much of the context as possible. 
Um, I don't have an immediate answer for that. That's a question posed for the committee. Uh, Tim? Um, yes, uh, I have some concern for the applicant if each of us individually without consulting others show up for our own personal site visit. So I think we need some more clarity. Is this going to be a group site visit by the whole committee or uh, I just want to avoid six or seven people showing up at different times and talking about this project and having someone give a tour, et cetera, et cetera, uh, without coordination of the entire committee. And I could see a problem with that already, because if you have a quorum of, of the committee going to a okay. site visit, then you're violating public law. Well, I think we should check with the town council on that, whether we can oh. require it, because I don't know if there's a liability issue or so. I think we need to. But that's a good that. question. Um, uh, we could add a question uh, because it's it's possible that the uh, project, uh, I don't know if they have somebody on site, we could ask them if, uh, maybe we do have to ask the town council. I wouldn't envision a liability issue with uh, visiting, but that's just my opinion. Um, we certainly, it sounds like, want to add the physical address. Uh, Robin? Um, yeah, the historical commission does do site visits um, pretty regularly when we have demolition delay reviews, they're usually scheduled by our um, staff assistant. And my understanding is that we can meet um, with the quorum as long as we, we don't deliberate um, while we're there. So while we're there, we, we don't speak of anything related to the project, but um, yeah. You, you mean not asking questions? Yeah, well, yeah, not asking questions and, and not we can ask questions of the applicant, but we cannot deliberate with each other. So we don't speak to each other about the issue at hand. Uh, Andy? Um, yeah, I was going to just add on what Robin said. So on planning board, we can meet, we can ask questions, but all that has to be then stated. We can't deliberate. And then we have a site visit report as part of a public meeting that documents what we saw. Uh, if there's a quorum. Well, no, for any site visit. So if we do, if we'll do a site visit um, as part of the, the presentation at the next board meeting, folks who attend the visit will report out on what, what they observed and what they heard. And they are free to ask questions. It's just, uh, Robin's exactly right. We can't deliberate, but we can certainly seek information and it just has to then be shared to the public. Uh, I saw Katie withdrew her hand. Well, that could add a, a bit of work <laughs> um, if there's report generation requirements. Uh, I, I personally see the advantage of being able to look at uh, projects. Uh, I've gone to them and looked uh, because I wanted to know what they were. And uh, it's informative and for me, uh, important part of uh, any review of uh, a process. Uh, it'd be, uh, I, I could see benefit in having a way for that to work. Um, my, my thought, uh, and we'll, we'll continue talking about this, it would be that we ask them if there's a contact person and or a preferred time where individuals might be able to meet, leaving it open-ended. That's just a thought. Uh, Katie? Well, I was just wondering if, if we, <clears throat> We're talking about the application, right? So we're right. saying we'd like the physical address. I think we're seems like we're in agreement with that. Um, and maybe we leave it at that to unless we want to deliberate right now about having a site visit as a not. I, I would vote, I would sort of propose to have if we were to do site visits, um, that we assign them so we don't all go to all of them. Um, first of all, that helps with the quorums, you know, with the public meeting issue, but also you know, um, the amount of time and effort and energy put put toward it. So if we were gonna deliberate, like we should do that. And then to your point, then we could add something to the application or we could simply add the physical address and then talk about this as an option this year to kind of test out. And we could call folks or email them or con to contact the person if we wanna do that. Uh, I'm hearing uh, differing comments, uh, a lack of uh, consensus uh, from the committee. Um, 
So uh, I, uh, I'm hesitant to uh, require it, certainly, at a minimum. Uh, yes, Tim? Um, one suggestion might be in uh, when the physical address is listed, perhaps having a sub comment that committee members may uh, review the site, but if there's any discussion with an appropriate applicant that the committee will more a more formal uh, committee site visit or something like that. Uh, I just wondered, for example, the last year, uh, all of us might have driven up to the North Cemetery and looked at the fence. That's technically a site visit, I guess. You drive by or you so on. <laughs> I do know when I visited the playground at the elementary school, I I contacted the principal's office before I snooped around just because I didn't want people wondering who this guy was looking around the property. So there's a matter of courtesy too. So um, that's something else to consider. Andy? Yeah, I, I would be in favor of, of actually having a more formal visit and any of the members can attend um, and then that that limits the visits because um, I do, Tim. I, I think your point earlier about people just showing up random times is, is a really good one. Is that we ask them to you know work with the committee? We'll schedule a thirty minute window. I think that if they're asking for money, there there probably is an expectation that people will want to come and do some due diligence and try to learn about the project. So I I don't think it's an unreasonable ask. And as long as we're not deliberating, we're not we're not violating um, open meeting law. Um, I think that we, I, I think it would be useful to have uh, that formal meeting. Whoever can make it can make it. We ask questions. We share that with the. Uh, what if uh, what if we? Oh. Um, oh, forgive me. What if we, adjacent to the physical address, added a comment such as Tim suggested, but an abbreviated one that says, uh, committee members may. Uh, contact person, uh, committee members may have an interest in contacting the applicant regarding a site visit. Uh, in other words, not mandating it, but letting them know we might contact them and then we could, we wouldn't have to have everyone attend. We did this with the Jones Library about uh, three years ago, I believe, uh, where four of us attended, or three of us attended, but they offered it, but it wasn't, uh, it was a formal offer from the applicant, but we didn't have everyone attend. And I'm trying to wonder if there's a uh, way to let them know that we uh, there may be members that have an interest in visiting and who might we uh, schedule or coordinate that with without formalizing it as a requirement. Before I respond, maybe recognize Sean as he's got his hand up. Uh, uh, Sean? Um, just two things, I mean, trying to keep this as straightforward on the application as possible. Um, I think Katie mentioned maybe just have a site visit question that says, you know, is it an option, yes or no? And I can put in parentheses next to it. If yes, someone will contact you or, or who do we contact to set that yeah. up? Um, and I would just say, think about the potential that you might have 15 applications and, you know, are you gonna go visit all 15 and are you gonna block out a Saturday and um, do that? And just the logistics that go along with that because I think, it, you know, it would be, there might be some fairness questions if you visit some projects and not others. Um, so just think, keep that in mind. And some and some projects, you know, the site visit may not be appropriate, right? If it's a to fund a program as opposed to a um, as opposed to a you know a construction project or something like that. Fairness questions, uh, interesting one. Uh, Andy, I see your hand up. Oh yeah, <laughs> legacy. I mean, I think we can. I think we sort of make very good points to pursue any one of these options, I'll just say, I would be in favor of, of asking for a single visit. <clears throat> any any committee member who's interested in attending can attend. And maybe there's some where nobody would attend and, um, you know, we just, we would let the applicant know and, you know, it would be, uh, it would just be a non-event. But um, anyhow, like I said, I see good points on either side, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, um, lots of money at play here. Um, I think it's worth doing as much due diligence as we can. 
my, my yeah. thoughts um, hearing the comments are that Jason, th that we leave it open for the committee to decide, not necessarily on the application, but rather uh, have the physical address along with a comment uh, or a statement that uh, there may be uh, interest from the committee to visit the site. Uh, uh, who might we, who would be an appropriate contact person if different from the um, project person, because there may be somebody submitting the project for somebody who lives there, uh, and then leave an open field for any comments. Um, so keeping it short, but not mandated. Um, I'm not sure what the best phraseology for that would be, but I think that would likely be the best uh, avenue for us uh, to proceed uh, without having it a requirement uh, for uh, 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 and, and see how it goes uh, this fall. Uh, Tim? Yeah, I was just going to suggest just maybe a statement saying uh, site visits are highly recommended but not required and who if um, and then put if um, which what who would be the contact person if a site visit is necessary or, or is recommended or something like that. Site visits I, I agree with Andy's point that I think we should let the applicants know that uh, particularly those who are uh, are requesting funds for for uh, physical structures that uh, site visits are recommended. Um, recommended for the applicant or for the no, no, for committee. the committee the committee feels they're highly uh, desirable desirable as opposed to mandatory i suppose we oh i i would lean towards the mandatory uh, i for example last year that project i forget that what the project request for the housing up on um near the middle school i forget the project name now but until I drove by and looked at the condition of all the painting, I would have had a very different viewpoint in terms of whether I felt comfortable regarding the disbursement of funds. So, any other uh, thoughts, uh, Sean? So, if it's okay with the committee, Sonia and I could draft some language of what those two questions okay. would look like. Send it to you all tomorrow, um, and just get us your feedback uh, maybe by by Monday. Um, so that we can get it into the uh, application. That makes sense to me. We certainly want the physical address and uh, it sounds like we want a uh, uh, reference to the desirability of uh, visiting <laughs> uh, without it being a, uh, at least it's not, there's not consensus on that. It's not unanimous uh, regarding yeah. uh, the mandate for visitations. And that would be my recommendation as well, that we let them know we're probably going to want to visit who we contact. But uh, it is taking I, some time, so we could move on. Uh, go ahead. Can Sam. I just add, um, those questions can also be asked during the presentations when the presenters are there presenting the project. I mean, we could ask about site visits then as well. Uh, Yes, yeah, we could. Uh, although there can be some benefit from seeing the project prior to meeting them in person to ask questions. I, I, I gain benefit. I see what Tim says. So uh, I don't think we have an immediate answer to it uh, from consensus in the committee that I'm hearing. Um, my thoughts are physical address for sure and reference in one way or another the uh, desirability of a uh, site visit and who might we contact. That would be my recommendation. Let's uh, see what uh, Sean you think in terms of that and come back to us with it. But in terms of physical address, we know that we want a field that says, please provide the physical address. Uh, other items on the application. This is uh, longer but important uh, uh, discussion than I anticipated. Um, does anyone else have uh, other aspects of the application that they would like to uh, reference? Um, I had one, and I don't know if we want to include it or not, but I'd like to open it up for the committee to uh, converse briefly. Uh, well, my comment was in the budget uh, section, do we wish to reference, because I don't believe we reference it anywhere else, uh, 
the desirability, uh, or rather, please include any quotation estimates you received as a part of your budgeting process, the consideration of multiple est estimates is encouraged. Do we want to have anything like that on this application or it's too much? I'm curious what, if any thoughts exist uh, with other co committee members regarding that. Uh, Andy. Thanks, Kim. I like the idea. I think Robin makes a good point where some of the work is so specialized, it may not be able, be able to have multiple quotes. So I think just some sort of documentation around the efforts that have been made would be useful. So please include any quotation estimates. Or just efforts to get multiple quotes, right? You know, I talked to the specialists, they, they weren't interested, but, you know, I did, I did make efforts to do that. Um, seems like a reasonable request. Um, please include any quotation estimates or uh, information gathered regarding estimates. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, you know, uh, companies that, uh, or, you know, whatever companies that you have, uh, you have approached about obtaining estimates and any information that you've shared. <laughs> Please I'm, not, I'm not a grammarian or, or okay. wordsmith person, but anyway, that's, that's a general thought. Please include any quotation estimates or any, uh, uh, Tim, if I can ahead. jump in, I would just say, please include estimates and then put the new sentence say, if, you know, if you're not, if, if you have, you know, if you're not able to, if you contacted uh, contractors, but we're not able to receive estimates, just please provide, provide that information. Sorry, I thought it, I thought I could do a better job than that. <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> Tim? <laughs> Can't hear you. Yeah, you must be on mute. Oh no, um, I was. I was. Did you hear that? Did you hear my garbled attempt? We heard you, Robin. I okay. called on Tim, but we can't oh, hear okay. Tim. Great. Still can't hear you. At least I can't hear you. Can anyone else hear Tim? Sorry, because I was muted. I apologize. There we go. Okay. Uh, one question might be: um, after we ask for the project uh, dollar request. We might have, maybe we already do, I can't remember, right underneath it, we might, how did you arrive at this figure or dollar request or figure or something like that? Very simple. And some might say we winged it. Some might say we got quotes. I mean, without getting terribly technical, that might be one option. Uh, Sean? So we have a section near the budget that says description of funding needed. And then underneath that box, it says include cost estimates and other sources of funding. So we could we could expand on the, the include cost estimates and other sources what of funding to say, um, this is the, uh, in your packet, it's on page 14 of 15. Oh, okay. Um, Includes cost estimates and other sources. Uh, cost estimates for expected or cost estimates that they've received from. Uh, is it redundant? I guess. Uh, include. Yeah, cost I mean, I was thinking sources. we could add to this section. Include, you know, if you know, if not multiple quotes, document efforts to secure multiple quotes or something that gets to what what's been described. That would work quite well, I believe. Uh, Andy. I, see, I I thought Tim's language was perfect. Just please explain how you arrived at this uh, estimate. And where would you recommend putting that? Uh, in the correct place. <laughs> I, I don't have it in front of me. I'm not sure, but you know wherever wherever it, it would be logical. Um, I, I I think you know simple is good. You know, people are going to take multiple paths. I, I think we we understand that, and it's. I think it, it provides some structure uh, and flexibility at the same time. I, I would recommend putting it where Sean referenced under the description of funding needed. Um, include any co include because it currently says include cost estimates and other sources of funding, comma, um, uh, any quotations received. What do you think, Tim? I was going to, <clears throat> if we said 
my original statement of how did you arrive at these figures, parentheses, uh, quotes, um, other funding sources, benchmarks, etc. end quote. Something like that. Um, <laughs> my thought, I hear what you're saying, it's phrased well. My thought would be- I would that Mitch Sean and or sign yeah, give us, go ahead. Give us a suggestion. I mean, we got the general sense, but maybe they yeah. could come up with some language for that too. Yeah, I, th I think we have the. Today. We know what you okay? want to do. Yeah, okay. I think we've got it. Okay. Uh, any other uh, recommendations or thoughts regarding the application uh, in its current form? So, if I to summarize, if I understand, we're seeking to add a physical address with a suggested comment for a site visit. Uh, we are suggesting adding uh, a reference to multiple estimates and quotations received in the description of funding needed or in the budget. Uh, and I believe those are the only two items that we were including. Is that correct? Okay. Any other comments on this? Okay, so we can proceed. Uh, and we currently have a calendar, just to bring this to the attention of committee again, because uh, it relates to this application. Uh, Sean, could you put that back up again? The calendar, please. Okay, uh, so we have, Sonia has put together a schedule that uh, works uh, for uh, the town and it seems to work for the committee. I just wanna make the committee aware, committee members aware that we have the application uh, opening, uh, goes live on the website as of September 1st and that it closes on Friday, September 30th with the new uh, item of the uh, town reviewing projects for issues and or eligibility. Uh, that's the interim step that's been added. Uh, and the question response time for applicants is six days from Friday, October 28th through Friday, November 4th. Uh, if anyone has any uh, comments or issues related to the September 1st, uh, application deadline. Uh, now it's time to speak, but for me it works and that's what we have on our application. Any comments from anyone? Okay, so I think we're set with the application. Uh, I think the comments made will lead to continuous improvement on that. Uh, let me look at our agenda here. Um, discuss deadlines and timelines for upcoming meetings. Um, I think we just sort of did that. Uh, does anyone have any other comments, questions, or issues with the general schedule that's uh, presented here? Okay. Um, I can't think of any other topics that I did not reasonably anticipate. Uh, yes, Tim. Sam, I just thought of the meeting question. When do you think we would meet in person as opposed to Zoom? Or any thoughts on that? That's a, that's a very good question. Um, and um, there certainly are benefits of meeting in person uh, from a connection issue, from a interpersonal communication. Uh, relationship. Uh, I I'm, I need to check with the town, but I believe it's flexible at present. Is that correct to your knowledge, uh, Sonia? Uh, I, I may need to, we may need to find out if we're able to meet in person. I think we are. Uh, so I, right now, um, we're not flexible. We're, we're doing remote. There may come a time where we could do, where we may have that flexibility, but because of okay. the technology, um, uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure, Sonia, unless you've heard otherwise, we're, we're doing remote for all of our meetings. Is this a COVID That's issue? Last I heard of um, it's just, so generally it's been either remote 
or hybrid and to do hybrid um, requires our IT staff. So we're really only doing hybrid for the council um, because there's a lot that goes into kind of doing the Zoom simultaneously with people in the room. Is that, would there be any anticipated change in that in the future? That uh, I think you're, I think you meant, uh, we'll, we'll talk with the town manager to see what his timeline is, but I don't think it's changing any time in the near future. There are some uh, uh, benefits that members have brought up, at least to my attention in terms of- yeah. uh, No, we can follow up with them and just, I'll, I'll clarify whether there's an option. Um, my guess is if there is an option, it's gonna be all one way or the other. It's not gonna wanna be a hybrid option, but we'll, we'll follow up with the town manager and, and um, I can let you know that information. My guess is the uh, community members who aren't on the board appreciate the capacity to uh, link in uh, remotely, but uh, yes, Andy. Uh, I'm just kind of joking. You want to make those site visits mandatory now, Sam? That, that way we don't <laughs> see each other. In jest. Yes, you're all welcome to come to Cape Cod. That would, work, that would work just fine. We can table that thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I don't see any, um, uh, I don't have any other uh, items, topics that uh, were not reasonably anticipated. I do want to uh, most of us were here last year. I do want to welcome Robin back again, formally for the committee. Uh, it's good to have you here. Should have done that at the start. Uh, despite your jet lag, it's, uh, uh, we're glad that you're here. Um, our next meeting, uh, according to the calendar, unless something changes, is currently scheduled for... Uh, it's the presentations, is it not? Um, application, proposal deadlines. Yeah, no, November 4th, maybe. It's, uh, it's not or listed as November, November 4th. Third, maybe it's the 3rd. It's the 10th. Uh, it's the oh, 10th. Not till the 10th, okay. Uh, you know, am I missing something? I guess we can review this to see if we need to sneak a meeting in there, but I believe yeah. we went last year straight from the um, questions and answers to meetings uh, where we were able to presentations, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to remotely gather our questions, uh, communicate them. Uh, yes, Tim. Yeah, just a question. <clears throat> Sonia, can you send out uh, a list of the current committee members with their terms and the, the group that they're affiliated with and so on. Uh, I, I just can't, can't seem to find that. I always find that helpful to have it right in front of me. Do you know what okay, I mean? We, are, we have three vacancies at the moment, so we're oh. waiting to fill those. But okay. they should be on the website. They oh, are. All right, fine. Fair Although enough. the terms need to be updated, I believe. Yeah, I don't think it's fully updated yet. Okay. okay. There's a lot of things in flux that hopefully by and the next by the next council meeting might be um, established and we'll uh, update the list. Okay. Uh, yes, you. Andy. Did you raise your hand again, Andy? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't hear. Um, yeah, I was going to just say on the planning board, we have not yet. We've got some new members and we have not yet voted on, um, on assignments. So uh, there's a possibility there may be a new planning board representative. Okay. Um, and we currently have, Tim, in response to your general question, we're, there are vacancies at present or that is yet to be filled for recreation uh, when Sarah stepped down. Uh, we're awaiting uh, feedback from planning and from housing, but until any such notification or occurrence happens, uh, the existing members uh, continue to participate and thank you to, to David and to uh, Andy and uh, we, uh, it would be great to see you continue uh, if you wish uh, and if your committees wish. Uh, but we also have a vacancy at the uh, Conservation Commission and uh, from Anna when she left and we have a vacancy for Sarah Eisinger's position. I was, as I said at the start of the meeting, contacted by the town manager's office regarding uh, interviews and I'm not sure which positions those were related to. I believe it's just the at-large position currently, but the town staff is aware of vacancies on committee and the benefits of uh, uh, having a full uh, group of nine and hopefully that will continue. So having said that, uh, unless there's something else of urgency, um, 
I don't know that we need to have a motion to end the meeting. I believe we can just uh, call it ended. So uh, I will end the meeting at 7.27 p.m. And everyone will be notified of our next meeting. Thank you all for attending. It's good to see you all again. And uh, thanks everyone for their assistance. And hopefully uh, we'll see what kind of slate we get coming up. Should be interesting. Hi, everybody. Thank you.